Tim. Uh, Hi, this is another episode of the Critical Introverts podcast. I'm your host, uh, Senor Filth. I'm accompanied by the benevolent asshole. And uh, we have a new guest. Do uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on, guys, um, on the uh, Critical Introverts show. <laughs> My name is Nate Cap, and I live in San Diego, California. I'm currently a podcaster and uh, content creator hosting the Cubby Hole podcast covering really important knowledge regarding consciousness, natural law, mind control, ancient uh, Egyptian origins, the occult truth discovery methods, symbolism, philosophy, and uh, so, so much more. And I'm, I'm also a caricature uh, slash esoteric artist and I've been drawing caricatures for over 15 years. Um, I came out with a book called uh, Beasted and another book called Little Beasties, both uh, published. And uh, with the with the caricature um, book, the Beasted book, uh, it's just it's a book filled with a whole bunch of um, uh, celebrities that I you know jacked up. Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. all these uh, paintings, um, and I. Uh, or you can call it beasted. Um, but uh, then I, you know, five years later, I came out with a book called Little Beasties. And uh, it's a book filled with pet caricatures. And um, so a bunch of celebrities from from Instagram. And then uh, ever since then, I have been uh, really working on myself. I started to wake up to what's going on in the world and uh, started to use my um, you know, my, uh, experience and, you know, making art and learning symbolism, uh, to make esoteric art. And I've been, uh, you know, putting, uh, lots of time and attention into making presentations and podcasts with slides that I'm putting my art into. So, um, you know, and some, some of the, uh, presentations that I gave were, uh, uh, rising upright, um, a higher direction, uh, uh, earth brain and the corresponding symbolism, um, uh, Dr. Strange decoded. It's an esoteric, um, study. And I, I've done a few other ones, but the most recent one that I, uh, did was called Relumination of the imagination. And it, uh, I gave that presentation at the seed for, growth conference uh that was uh that just happened uh, about a month ago month and a half ago mm -hmm. uh, amazing conference uh it, you know it was supposed to be in person but because of all the medical tyranny that's been taking place yeah. um we uh we had to do it uh through zoom and it worked mm -hmm. out really well and i think it actually like helped us realize that you know this is definitely uh, a very important way to uh, approach this uh, with with the the, the kind of content, um, but um, but yeah, man, that's that's where my heart's been is just in, in the knowledge and trying to make sense of the world and trying to spread truth and uh, you know it's uh, I just want to say I really uh, appreciate you guys and what you're doing. I've actually got Thanks. to listen to a few of your episodes and I think mm -hmm. it's so cool to see you know, young guys, uh, uh, really just trying to, you know, like I said, make sense of the world yeah. and, and bring on guests and, and be open-minded and, and, uh, you know, share your views and, uh, share what you've learned and, and, uh, you know, creating a, a space for people to really come together. I mean, that's something that not too many people are doing, not enough people are doing, um, but, uh, yeah, man, kudos to you guys. So I just wanted thank to, you. you know, that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> if I may ask, like, uh, you said you, you began to like, kind of like work on yourself. Like, is there any particular reason that, or, or anything that drove you to do that? Or do you even well, remember what time it was? Like, what um, age? well, you know, during my teen years, I really suffered immensely and, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I would say when I really, um, well, I always make a joke, uh, 
well, it's not really a joke, but you know, I always say that my first awakening was when I was like five years old and waiting for Santa Claus on the side of the stairs and to see my mom and dad come through the door, you know, it really just like destroyed my whole worldview. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, I have been questioning things, but really, um, you know, when I, when I uh, started to really awaken, and I think a lot of people will agree with this is during, you know, uh, when, when I saw Zeitgeist, the documentary Zeitgeist, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but I'm not. Uh, it is, uh, it, it, it's basically about, um, you know, just uh, religion and 9-11 and the uh, financial system. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's available. Yeah. Uh, where is it available? It's available on, um, on, uh, you know, um, YouTube. Uh, okay. I mean, it's available on the, on the website too, but, uh, I, I believe you can get it on surprisingly it was on Netflix, but I understand mm -hmm. why it was on Netflix. Cause mm -hmm. I look at Netflix as a, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a psyop, um, you know, and I can get more into that later, but, uh, but the point is, is um, this documentary really just blew my mind and mm -hmm. made me start questioning everything. And, uh, you know, and then I started like looking into so many different uh, uh, avenues of, you know, researchers who were exposing things that most people would never tr even try to look into, let alone talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just been, uh, you know, I could go, I, I could, I could tell like a whole, you know, two hour story yeah. uh, just, just to give you a, a summary of all the things I've went through uh, since then. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that was like my first big moment where I really started having an awakening, but I will say that I didn't, you know, because I didn't have the, like the full picture you know, um, I'll, I'll just say that there, there was two more parts to this that really uh, got me going, which is, you know, like I got into Alex Jones's uh, earlier work, uh, yeah. which, which brought me into like a negative. He really showed the whole world the negative side of everything, which I really appreciate. But that 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 put that put me in a very dark place within myself. So I had to go search deeper. Mm -hmm. And then I came across the works of, um, you know, Manly P. Hall and Jordan Maxwell and Mark Passio and um, Santos Bonacci, his early work, uh, Michael Tessarion, and, you know, so many other researchers. And mm -hmm. it really like brought into that like positive uh, and negative yeah. uh, 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 sides of things. And, and so I really um, was so inspired and that that's what really pushed me to want to learn because I couldn't just like believe everything I was hearing. I had to go do my own research. Mm -hmm. And so I put, you know, thousands of hours into everything that I speak of just because I really want to know, I want to understand yeah. how the mind works and how the world works and uh, why we're in the position that we're in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just open up the floor with, uh, like, I wanted to kind of start with just this whole COVID bullshit. Uh, I, I have no interest in talking about like the virus or anything like that. Sure. I'm tired of that conversation. <laughs> yep. I mainly want to like focus on any other concerns or like, it, it's strange to me like, that this is weird little virus thing has devolved into this strange war against like i don't know what you got like, like it, it developed into like like individualism versus collectivism like you know people uh, a war on truth it, it, it just some little virus has drove this weird division and and from day one i just never understood why like it, it's it's sort of what like it's revealed to me, to people, um, just like a complete lack of curiosity that I, think I, I get from so many people that, I mean, I'm not sure if it was always there or it's just this thing this year has exposed it. Um, I don't know. It, like, I don't know what do you guys feel about that. Well, I think, oh, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead, Nate. You're the, you're the guest. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, well, 
so this is the question that you're asking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I were to summarize it, it's like, why, why are we so divided? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and how long have we been divided? And I would yeah. say we've been divided for thousands of years, but um, it, it really takes us wanting to understand something uh, fundamental about ourselves that helps us understand why we're so divided. Mm -hmm. And, you know, first we have to recognize that our minds are divided and we have to know how our minds are being manipulated and controlled to stay divided. So if we're, you know, individually being, you know, really honest with ourselves, we can see that, you know, two of the biggest reasons we suffer so much and, and that we're so confused is because we mostly accept into our individual belief systems that which is not true, while at the same time dismissing or refusing to accept what is true. So basically, it's like, you know, we're fooled pretty much in two uh, different ways. And, you know, that is, um, it's because you know, we're refusing to accept what is true and we're accepting what is incorrect, what is not true, what's false. Mm -hmm. And understanding this is, is about, you know, being able to tell, you know, truth from falsehood or, you know, deception. Mm -hmm. And so basically it, it, it's about, you know, um, you know, we, we want to, we, what we really want is we want freedom from suffering we want freedom from confusion. And, you know, because there's a war on consciousness, you know, to keep us divided within. And, you know, because it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a divide and conquer strategy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, one thing we have to really uh, make sure that we understand about this is when it comes to consciousness, we're not separate from each other because see separation, um, you know, within is an illusion and that's what keeps us divided. See, so like what you said about, um, you know, we're so, uh, you know, the individualism or collectivism, it's both. And that's what people are having. A, that's why people are so divided. They're yeah. so divided because it's like, well, like, you know, if you, if you look at this in a, um, in the sense of, uh, uh, you know, politics or the political spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, the, the right wing is all about individualism and the left wing is all about collectivism, mm -hmm. but they're only, they only have one part of the picture and that's why they're so confused. But see, mm -hmm. this is part of the divide and conquer strategy because the, you know, the conquerors, the dominators of this world, they, they know how to pin us off against each other because they know that as long as we choose one dialectic, one side, mm -hmm. that we will be, we will fear that which will, that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, as long as we, uh, you know, choose a side, you know, then we, we have this us versus them mentality. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have an us versus them mentality, we're right where they want us mm -hmm. because we will continue to stay in fear as long as uh, we have chosen a side uh, that they have put out uh, in front of us. And they, uh, these, these uh, dominators, these uh, master uh, psychologists, um, they know how the mind works. And that's why we are getting our asses handed to us on both sides, because we, 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 we refuse to accept what is true. Right. Yeah. While at the same time, dismissing and refusing to accept what is true. You know, can I, can I ask you a question, Nate? Sure. Uh, you kind of gave me an idea in terms of like uh, tribalism. And uh, before I ask you a question, if I can like, give you a little bit of context uh, as far as like what it is that I'm thinking. Um, so if we trace it back to uh, the fights, I think that happened like in the Colosseum back in Rome, 
where they would pit people against like animal or like peasant against like some warrior and stuff like that. I think that's the thing that's perpetuated for so long now with um, I'm a fan of organized sports, but I think that's something that's perpetuated through uh, time into organized sports. And the reason why people tend to have like a dogma or like a, a, a tendency to be tribal when it comes to tribe uh, politics is because it's the same sort of mentality that people have, like when they cheer for the Dodgers or they, they cheer for like their favorite sports team, because it doesn't matter how bad your team is, you're still going to be loyal to that team. It doesn't matter how wrong you are. They're, they don't really care about the truth. It's more like it's, is that tribal mentality. And last time I brought it up in the, um, like, for example, like, I think all of this is just like an illusion because I brought up Ted Turner and Ted Turner was, uh, <laughs> I know this is, it makes like it makes sense like it, it makes it seems like uh, I'm going all over the place but uh, the way I see it is Ted Turner he used to own the uh, the Braves back in the 90s and the Braves had like a presence in the 90s as being one of the best teams in, in uh, baseball so Ted Turner is also the one that created CNN and we all know CNN like the big this propaganda machine so my question is, how much do you think organized sports has, has uh, any effect on like politics or like this sort of dogma mentality of like not caring about the truth? I, I think that's what you're talking about, right? Just like really yeah, discarding uh, the truth and just, this is my team. Who cares? Like if they, if they molest the kids, it's like, <laughs> we're, I'm still going <laughs> to go for this team. Like, right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Dude, you're right on. You're right on. You're, see, um, when you get into the world of the occult, when you get into the world of, um, you know, just just understanding how mind control works and, you know, you're bringing up these uh, these sports teams. Um, it, it makes me think of uh, this uh, the, uh, Ohio State Buckeye, this the sports nut, you know, it's like you're a sports nut. Well, anyway. It's like you, you have to understand that they know the, the dominators of this world. They know how uh, the mind will will, um, you know, gravitate towards uh, one dialectic or the other, which means that if you look at uh, the news, you look at politics, you look at um, you look at uh, sports, you look at um you know, uh, 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 just the, you know, the science of color frequency. Okay. When you start to realize that blue is a feminine submissive color, it's a calming color, right? And then you have red, which is an aggressive, it's a masculine color. And this is, uh, you know, the, the, like you could look at, um, red, representing, uh, you know, the aggressive government. And you can look at, you know, the state as the blue, it's the calming, it's the, it's the mother, it's the father. See, because uh, uh, you, you, you talk about tribalism, well, it goes back to mother and father, because once you start to understand that it's about the divide between the female and the male, then you start to realize like, oh, okay, the, the more we start to understand the brain. Okay. You have two hemispheres and this is the, uh, this is the, the, uh, neocortex of the brain. This is, this is, you know, the gray matter, the telencephalon. All right. And so basically you have what's the right brain, um, is, is uh, associated with what's called the sacred feminine and the sacred feminine is a submissive energy. So like, you know, basically this is where our creative side comes from. This is where our, uh, uh big world picture thinking comes from. This is where our, uh, you know, uh, empathy comes from. And then you have your, uh, left brain intellect. And that's your sacred masculine self. This is your action uh, principle self. This is your uh, logical, scientific, mathematical, um, you know, intellectual side. Okay. So uh, when you start to understand that we have these, uh, these hemispheres uh, of, 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 these, of these energies, you know, sacred feminine, sacred masculine, well, then you start to recognize um, how color 
uh, uh, interacts with those. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, I'm going to get to your point. Um, basically, um, when we understand what's, what's called the principle of mentalism, the principle of mentalism is a Kybalian principle. And when I say it's a Kybalian principle, I'm just saying it comes from this book called the Kybalian and it has the seven hermetic principles. So it's the first hermetic principle. And this principle is, uh, it, it, it's stating that the whole universe uh, is mind. The, the universe is mental. Okay. So when we understand that the universe is mental, we understand that this is where uh, ideas come from, and then they manifest into form, into physical form, okay? So when we start to understand how the brain works, how the mind works, then we start to see how it's manifesting into these things, like you're saying with the the, the tribal sports teams, because uh, it's always been, there's always been a war between the feminine and masculine, for thousands of years. And so if, if you uh, can uh, um, keep the, a divide uh, in the mind, the, the sacred feminine and sacred masculine, well, then that will manifest into the physical form. And that means that uh, you get these, uh, these, these dialectics, you get these, uh, you know, and I, I look at politics as an illusion, okay, because it comes from mind, but it's not real in nature. All right, like the political spectrum, you know, the left versus the right. So, uh, you know, you look at the colors, okay, and I'm coming back to the colors now. The look at look at the uh, look at and and remember the dominators of this world they love to obfuscate they love to confuse things so if you look to the right you have a um, you have the red side okay and then you look to the left and you have the blue side all right and uh, think about police what 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 colors of their are their lights they're blue and they're red. Okay. Look at the teams. Look at the major teams in sports. You know, um, you know the, how they're they're always playing against each other. Like, uh, for instance, um, you know, two of the biggest rivals in college football is Ohio State Buckeyes. They're red. You know, scarlet. And then who are their rivals? It's the it's the blue team. You know, the the uh, the um, Michigan Wolverines. Right. Okay. So you you see how they. Uh, they know how these colors work. The dominators of this world know how these colors work. And so um, for thousands of years, these dominators have known how uh, as long as um, they can pin each other uh, against each other, um, like, you know, the feminine and the masculine, well, they can keep us in a, in a, in a great divide. Hmm. They can keep us, um, you know, uh, constantly at war and, uh, it, it's, 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 you know, they, so they don't just, they don't just make it a, you know, red versus blue, uh, um, you know, in uh, politics, they make it all across the whole, you know, world. I mean, look at the American flag, it's red and blue. I mean, yeah, it has white, but you know, it's about understanding those uh, color frequencies and uh, you know, look at the flag. That's a, that's a form of tribalism in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So so because we know uh, how these colors work and when we understand these energies of the universe, um, knowing this, knowing how the mind works, uh, this is what really keeps us um, uh, segregated. It's not, it's not just like, you know, the, um, the violent uh, uh, coercion of the government. It's also because we're ignorant. Um, we're, you know, we're not nescient anymore. Nescient just means like, you know, because the information wasn't available, that's why we don't know. We actually have uh, this information right now, you know, and hopefully we can continue to have it, but you know, with censorship and everything, uh, it's not looking so, so great. But the point is, is that uh, this information is out there for people to, to understand, and it, it should be taken very serious because if we don't understand this, we're always doomed to be dominated by uh, by these rulers, these elitists. So, 
Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I agree because it's like one of those uh, things that I, I've been like talking about or like a, a theme, like not, not the color frequency thing. Like I've, I've never looked into that, but I think it's really interesting how you bring up um, the red and the blue and how the red is a masculine energy versus the blue is a feminine energy. And I agree that the whole conflict between both, uh, by creating conflict sort of, sort of creates this uh, stagnant, um, just like immobile situation where we can't really progress anymore. And uh, I think that's, that's what, what, what's, instead of flowing together and progressing together as, as a whole, we're just like in constant conflict and division. And because uh, they're always trying to make it seem like, oh, uh, even like if you talk about this, uh, the war of the sexes, like who's better, like man or right. woman? It's, it's not. It's not that one is better than the other because, like, like Adam Carolla. I think Adam Carolla is the one that compare. Like, well, we can't like compare like oranges and apples. Like, they're two different things. Like, they're like an orange is good and an apple is good. They're both good for different reasons or for different purposes. Right. And men were built like a certain way to be able to get certain thing things done, and women were built like a certain way to be good at, at certain things. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing patronizing or, or insulting about that and it's Absolutely. like but people keep <laughs> keep running away from the truth They're like okay that's that shouldn't be an insult i mean to be a mother or be a breadwinner there's something wrong with that yeah and, right uh, yeah i just thought it was yeah really interesting that's the first time i've ever heard like uh comparing feminine energy and masculine energy to to those uh colors so that's that's, that's cool <laughs> how much of this like is just purely driven through fear because I'm getting a sense that the, the average person that like is much more leans to like a, a collectivist kind of mindset they they're driven through it like through like it, it's kind of a comfort like a more of a comfort and more than anything and individualists are a little bit more like I don't know kind of risque kind of thing like how much of this is just driven through fear and, and misunderstanding and like yeah. Do you uh, do you want the very simple answer first? Eh, it's a long show, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I'll I'll give you the simple answer. Yeah. Absolutely, a one hundred percent yes. Mm -hmm. It is all fear, mm -hmm. because fear is the driving force of division. Mm -hmm. Fear is what makes us because you know we fear the unknown. And I think a lot of people can agree with that. But what we don't really understand is how, you know, we, uh, you know, like what you're saying about the collectivist mindset is, you know, we fear is what makes us feel like, well, I want to be part of the winning team. You know, yeah, I want to yeah. be part of like the people. I want to be part of like what everybody else agrees upon but nobody is questioning uh, you know when you're in a when you're a collectivist mm -hmm. you're not you're you're blind or you're willfully ignorant mm -hmm. to the fact that there are uh uh morals there are there is or there is there is such thing as moral law there is mm -hmm. such thing as natural law there are such things um there is such thing as uh something that is uh, governing our behavior in nature, you know, because the, the very reason that we have consequences is because, you know, like the very reason that we learn lessons is because there's a mechanism in nature. And that mechanism is there to teach us the lesson. Because otherwise, we, we wouldn't learn anything. We wouldn't learn, we wouldn't learn you know, uh, why doing, you know, why raping a little boy is wrong or, you know, why, uh, uh, you know, some, you know, murdering somebody is wrong. We would never learn why that is, but it's, it's, it's inherent in our nature. And, um, you know, this, this law is, is what scares people. Because this, this law is what governs um, our consequences for our behavior. And therefore, uh, people, people want to, um, you know, be uh, what, what's called um, moral relativists. Okay. Yeah. And moral relativists, uh, you know, take the position that, 
oh, oh uh, you know, what a right is and what a wrong is, is what we all collectively decide it is. Mm-hmm. And that's wrong. No, that, that, that means that that's like saying like man is God. You can't, you cannot uh, say that man is the creator. You can't say man is the arbiter of truth because if, if that were the case, uh, well, then each one of us could just like make up whatever the hell we wanted. We would never like, <laughs> like, like, like why, like if you murdered somebody, why wouldn't you just like say, well, Hey, it was justified. Uh, I, I did it. And I, I'm sorry, uh, I'll move on. And, you know, I don't have to go to jail. Uh, you know, there's not yeah, going to yeah. be any consequences for me, but no, that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's not how it works. We, we have to understand that there are, um, you know, there is a mechanized, uh, uh, in, uh, um, you know, there is a, there is a uh, intelligent mechanized system that governs our behavior. And uh, that's something I can, uh, you know, get into if you, if you want me to, but I just wanted to answer your question about the collectivism. Yeah. Cool. Well, I was uh, just going to, I was just going to say, like, uh, I, I do agree that uh, for the most part, I think uh, most people do have like a conscience. I think that's what he's talking about. And that's why a lot of people, people with uh, the least amount of friends, that's the reason why they have the least amount of friends is because they have a conscience. Right. Uh, a lot of people, a lot, you know, well, because a lot of people like to play off of moral relativism as, as you were saying, Nate. And that's the thing. Like, if you told somebody the truth, like say you have a friend or somebody that uh, tr- they ask you, Hey, what do you think? Uh, you think I should cheat on my wife with this other girl? And like, you tell them the truth, like, what the hell are you doing, man? You've been married to this woman for like, for like so many years. They don't want to hear that. They want somebody else to take the guilt away from them. They're like, oh yeah, go ahead and like go screw that other blonde girl, or go <laughs> go ahead and uh, go ahead and do all these drugs. Go ahead and do this. <laughs> it's like people want to have like excuses, like sort of like right. moral relativism. As soon as you tell them the truth, they don't want to be your friend. If you tell them the truth, and that that's that's a why I, that's I think the reason why a lot of people are. Um, also introverted, uh, mm-hmm. hence the name <laughs> critical <laughs> introverts. <'cause laughs> I don't need those kind of people in my life because they know they're doing something wrong. And if they're doing something wrong, I'm not going to be there to cheer them on. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, uh, I like the quote by Carl Jung, man will do, or sorry, people will do anything, no matter how absurd to avoid facing their own soul. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. You, you mentioned know? you mentioned a, a little bit earlier about like that there's both collectivism and individualism within people. I guess for you, like, do you have like a I don't know what you call it, but like a, like how far would you say your collectivist mindset goes to keep you kind of grounded versus how far your individualism goes to keep you grounded? If you know what I'm kind of asking. Yeah, well, okay, so what, how I would uh, phrase this is, well, for one, from a personal standpoint, I'm not your typical, um, you know, political collectivist. I'm not a political, uh, you know, individualist. Uh What I, Uh what I am is I would consider myself a moral absolutist, okay? And that means that I, um, I, I align myself in nature with the laws of nature, not because, not because it's a, because it's, it's definitely not a man-made thing. It's not a man-made construct. It's uh, we get to this point um, by understanding, uh, uh, you know, the, the behavior of, of, of a human being. We, we get to this point by understanding the consequences that follow, you know, like most people, uh, like, it's funny, a lot of people like, um, who don't believe in natural law, they believe in karma, which I find really funny, because that's exactly what it is. But obviously, you can't just, you know, uh, you can't explain. um, I mean, you could say, like, uh, like, if you wanted to really narrow down natural law, and, you know, just a few words, it would be don't steal. Right. I mean, that's not a few words, that's two words, but uh, basically it's just, you know, uh, it's the golden rule rule. Do one, you know, do unto others as you would have done to yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's so much more to it, but most people don't want to look into that because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not, um, it's not of their, 
uh, they don't, they just don't, they don't want the responsibility that comes with that. But Mm -hmm. to answer your question, it's, uh, it's about understanding, like, you know, what I kind of said earlier is that we're not separate. Okay. We're one, we are, you know, individual units of consciousness within a one unit of consciousness. Okay. That's how I'm, that's how, that's uh, where my studies have brought me to understand. Mm -hmm. And because of this, um, I see that as, you know, we are in this collectively in consciousness, Mm -hmm. we have a collective consciousness and, um, and as, as an individual, we are unique I look at myself as an individual who has individual rights that are equal to every individual on this planet, right? So, uh, you know, when it comes to individualism, um, it's about understanding that, you know, rights, uh, uh, you know, understanding morality is, is so vital because you're, you're realizing like, hey, I am, I'm a human being. I have rights in nature, not given by man. I have these rights uh, and I am going to defend myself because that is a right. That is the right thing to do. And, but, you know, also I'm not going to aggress upon anyone else's rights, which means I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, infringe on uh, someone else's uh, well-being. I, uh, so, so this is, these are what's called the uh, self-defense principle and the non-aggression principle, right? I've heard about that. It's like a, don't like libertarians like live on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it is a libertarian uh, worldview. Um, But libertarians are, you know, like, I, I don't think that they've gone far enough in their research to realize like, you know, that, you know, the, the way that they believe that they still have to be taken care of to a, you know, tiny degree uh, is not really what's going to, um, you know, get us out of this enslavement that we're in. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just, you know, I I like to say that, you know, at least libertarians have got to where they're at, but Mm -hmm. they have, I would say they have to go further in their research. They have to, you know, learn that there's, uh, so much more to the picture, just like conservatives. Um, you know, there's, it's, just, it's about like, um, you know, you're almost there. You're, you're getting close. You're getting close. You're, you're, you're at least like going towards the middle, which I can always appreciate, but I know that there's so much more. We have to go further because why there's suffering going on in the world. And as long as we stay divided, we contribute to that suffering. And, uh, you know, that, that's, you know, it, it, so, so, you know, uh, this, this um, collectivist mindset, though, is really interesting because uh, it's really rooted in materialism. It's not rooted in spiritualism. It's rooted in, uh, you know, that uh, this, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very left brain worldview. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of uh, this, this, this really comes with, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the religion of atheism, because atheism really is a, as a religion. And, um, you know, most people who are in a collectivist mindset usually take on that atheistic worldview. Um, and like I said, this is a left brain dominant worldview. Okay. So, so understanding that, and then understanding that, uh, you know, the individual is, um, uh, 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 you know, just as important. Um, we have to, we have to look at this, uh, you know, as a, an, as a spiritual, uh, understanding because the spiritual understanding is going to let us know that we're not divided. We're not divided as just an individual. We're not divided as a collectivist We're we are, yeah, we're all one. Sure. But we're not one in a materialistic worldview. We're one, uh, spiritually in, in consciousness, and uh, I think that's what's really hard for us to understand because we're stuck in this materialistic mindset. So, hmm. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, and, and yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna bring up something kind of like interesting that I I uh, heard and saw like on YouTube like a while back. It uh, has to do with like an interview with uh, Michael Crichton. I don't know if you guys have ever read any of his books, but uh, State of Fear is like a really good book. Mm. 
uh, in terms of like uh, so are uh, pushing fear to control people, and uh, it has to do with global warming and how it's just they're using fear to control people. But uh, in one of his interviews, he was talking to uh, I think it was Charlie Rose uh, interview with Michael Crichton, and where because even though Michael Crichton was like a fiction writer, everything he wrote was also actually based off of like nonfiction. So everything he read was nonfiction. So a lot of the things that the stories he was uh, writing about were based on truth. Uh, in the interview, he starts talking about like, this is like right before he died. So like he actually wants to write about, I think like we were talking about how like we're all sort of like connected. Maybe I'm reading too much or is this wishful thinking, but the one thing that he brought up, um, I'm trying to think, uh, I guess, what, what, what uh, topic would this fall under? Um, the study of the mind. What's the name of the, the, the when you're studying the mind? Psychology? Um, not psychology. Anyway, oh. it, it doesn't really. What was that? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, my mind's blank. <laughs> uh, no, no, never mind. Is it that, that, that's phreno okay. phrenology? Is it is something like that? Uh, no, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really yeah, matter. But, hey, we'll go uh, the, the one interesting Neurology? thing that he yeah, I think it's neurology. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? He was looking into that. And uh, the one thing that he said was that, I don't know where he read this, but he's talking about that. A lot of people, like if you walk behind them and you touch them on their shoulder, there's like a, there's like a, 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 a I guess a test that they did through the person actually, there's like a split second that they actually turn around before they, they're actually touched by the person. So yeah. the question he posed, like, how is it that, the person knew that that person was there even before you touched them. It's sort of like uh, having that third eye of knowing like what's behind you before you're actually touched that by that, uh, by that, uh, by that person. So I think we're all interconnected, even though we're not, we're all made up of atoms. I think if like we move, we're actually kind of like moving like water, even though we're solid because none, nothing is really solid. Like if you read anything about like quantum physics and, or watching if it's not quantum physics, but yeah, like nothing. So I think like even though we're in motion, like we're actually sensing each other's vibrations, or like we're 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 all connected, I guess, in some way. That's the point that I was trying. To make. <laughs> but I just thought it was uh, interesting, and uh, uh, unfortunately, he's not with us, Michael Crichton. And then uh, I would have liked to hear what he had to say about neurology and about the study of like how we're all sort of interconnected. I I think. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I, I don't, I've never, I mean, I might've read a, like, um, like a little bit from Michael Crichton, but I definitely know that's, um, you know, he's a, he's an author that I want to study for sure, because I mean, you know, um, he's, he's definitely well known in the, uh, truth community. And so, um, yeah, man, uh, I, I think, once we see there's a, there's these other principles, right. That, um, that I was kind of talking about earlier, uh, with mentalism. Remember I said, mentalism is the first hermetic principle and there's seven of them. There's actually eight, but there's seven hermetic principles. And then there's the eighth principle, which is a hidden principle. Um, it's, it's a, you know, there, there, I, I give a full explanation on this on the cubbyhole podcast, but, um, basically, when we understand the principle of correspondence, okay, this principle is the principle is uh, uh, as above, so below, and and um, so below, as above, right? So that means like, you know, you look at something like a hurricane, and then you uh, you see like, okay, there's like a spiral happening there, um, and you think of like a vortex. And you think like, you know, um, just all the things that you can think of that have vort vortices and, you know, look at a calic on your head. Why do you have a calic on your head? Why is it like that? You know, why, why is a galaxy look like a hurricane? Um, you know, why, why is it that, uh, you know, um, uh, an atom looks like Metatron's cube, you know, why is it that, um, Let's see here. Uh, you know, like it, the, the point is, is like your eye, right? Your the eye within is a reflection of many things that have, uh, you know, like a, a, a center point, a focal point. So your eye within is like a focal point. 
And that focal point is like a reflector. It's like a mirror. And everything that you're seeing is mirroring you. You know, all of us are mirrors of each other. And so that's why, you know, when someone is about to touch you, you have a sense, you know, you have like a, a, a intuition, you have a sixth sense, you have something is something is about to happen. And it's, it's because, well, for one, even in science, um, you know, you look into uh, the um, biology of belief by Bruce Lipton, he gets into the field. And this field is, uh, it, it's kind of like a, um, uh, I can't remember, a torus. Okay, so it's like a donut shape, the field is. So this energy is going uh, all through us and it's making this like donut shape of energy. And that's why we're able to sense things, you know, because, you know, uh, air is not just nothing. It's a gas, right? It's a, it's, it's what, um, you know, it's what br brings life to us. Um, or it's like, you know, what keeps us going, uh, you know, it's oxygen, um, but also it's carbon dioxide. It's, you know, all kinds of other different uh, gases that are in between us. There isn't, there isn't like a, a blank space. And so our, we have a, we're made out of electricity and that electrical charge is going through that field. And that field goes out to like 15 feet, you know, but that's just like what we can sense. That's not like, you know, uh, that's not saying that, you know, we, we uh, you know, every movement that we make isn't felt across the whole universe because it is, you know, but, you know, that's an abstract uh, um, thing to say. But the point is, is that once we understand that, you know, um, you know, it's kind of like the butterfly effect, you know, like, um, sorry, not maybe, yeah, it is the butterfly effect. It's like, uh, you know, they say uh, a butterfly um, flapping its wings on one side of the world, it can be felt on the other side of the world. Well, that's just, you know, it's a very exaggerated thing to say of like the fact that what you're saying is you're about to be touched and you can feel it before it even gets to you. So, you know, and, and this works with our thoughts too. Um, hmm. So, so it's, it's a, uh, you know, the universe is so <laughs> magical. And, and yeah. <laughs> You're making me think like 100 miles per hour, like everything you're saying is kind of like yeah. bringing up different uh, different things. And I'm glad you're on the show because then I can kind of like uh, ask you more questions or like uh, tell you like my experience or like what I've read too. <laughs> like the one thing, like uh, I was going to point like a few different things, like the one thing uh, about the butterfly effect, like in quantum physics, there's like this, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called spooky uh, reaction or something like that, where one thing can be felt from like if like an atom can influence another atom miles away and they've already proved that this can be that this actually happens right and then like the other thing i was going to say too as far as in terms of like feeling people's energy and one of the books that uh, uh michael Crichton wrote like it's actually his autobiography i think actually nonfiction. he talks about how he was going to, into these sessions with the, this one um i don't want to call it cold but it was like a I don't know what, what, it, what it was called, but it was like a class where <laughs> they, were, they would meditate and uh, there's people in there that could actually allegedly could see people's auras. And then based on his, uh, his meditating, he wasn't able to achieve that where he could see the, the auras, but he actually said that he started feeling around somebody and then in the same area where the person was saying, oh, that's where the aura is, like he actually could get sense like a like a warm tingling feeling like in his hand so i thought that was really interesting that he shared like uh an experience with somebody else that could see the aura she could see it and then but he can't see it but he can actually touch it okay. <laughs> all right so now to move on from that point i was gonna say like when i was like a, a kid too um i used to see things too like i used to see like little green orbs like mm -hmm. around my bed like so they would fly, like so these little green arms and uh i don't know if, if you guys have ever watched uh ghost rider on tv like it was like an oh yeah, show yeah on PBS. That. So uh, that's I, that's what unfortunately it, i've never seen it yeah well anyways it was like a little like uh like if you've seen like on tv where there's like little green orbs i could actually see them all the time as a kid i think i was like maybe like two or three i can't remember how old i was but i used to see them all the time but being a kid being new to the world 
I thought it was like a natural occurrence. I thought it was like rain or I thought it was like wind or I thought it was something normal. But like one day I brought it up to my mom because like, what is those green things that come out at night? Like that swirl around my head and like fly wow. around the house. And then she's like, what are you talking about? Like, that's not normal. I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> and then I kept seeing them for like a long time as a kid. Like they were just like come. And then one time, um, when I was sleeping in my like some bunk bed, I was a little kid. Uh, this is later on when I got older. Um, I st- I stopped seeing them as often, but like one time they materialized into a person, or it looked like an angel or something, like some kind. Of, and I remember waking up and seeing it like hovering over my bed, like all these green orbs like materializing into a person. And I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell is this?" And I was like so scared. I covered myself with the sheet. And for like a long time, I could not, I, I could not sleep without having the sheet over my head. And ever since then, I could, uh, well, it's kind of gone away now, but for, for like a long time, like between my, uh, like in my forehead, in the center of my forehead, I would feel this uh, tingling sensation whenever I would go to sleep. I would feel like somebody was like near me and it would just go crazy. It would just go really crazy. I, I would go really crazy where it would hurt. So I'd have to. I would have to touch my forehead and then go to sleep like that. Otherwise I couldn't go to sleep because I felt like some tingling sensation, like right in the center of my center of my forehead as a little kid. But eventually I, I don't think I feel, I don't really, I don't feel that anymore. Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember like when that sort of ended? Like, uh, roughly, like teenage years or something? Or? No, it, it, not like younger. I was like, maybe the, the whole, the, the, the apparition where they actually formed like an angel or some kind of a figure over my bed. Wow. Um, that was like eight or eight or nine. That was like later, like, but like sometime after that, like I stopped seeing them. I don't remember seeing them at all. Like as a teenager, but like, this is all as a kid. I saw them a lot as a little kid, like two or three. I saw them like all the time, but like eventually it just like, man, yeah. I, yeah. I remember, I remember when I was a kid, uh, like my parents ceiling, it was like the, like wood. And you know how you see yeah. the wood lines and shit like that? Yeah. I don't know what the hell it was, but yeah. when I was a kid, I would like, you know, late at night when I couldn't sleep, I would just look into the, like, into the wood grain. Yeah. And like, all of a sudden, like, they would start to move yeah. and stuff like that. I don't know how much of that is so, like, I was a weird kid so, or how much so, I was so, to sleep. <laughs> I don't know, but it just reminded me of that. So um, I was going to ask you, like, Nate, did, did you have, like, any, like, experience? Because like, I think a lot of these things happen when we're, like, little kids. Like, mm-hmm. did anything out of the normal, like, happen to you as a kid, like, like that? No, I was, uh, I was a perfect kid. I, I never <laughs> got to uh, experience any of those crazy things uh, that uh-huh. people just make up. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> um, no, I, that really... That that actually really happened because for like a long time I was like you know what like maybe it's like when you rub your eyes and you don't see uh, mm-hmm. you, maybe you're seeing so I was like maybe I was just like seeing things because but I remember as a kid I would see them for long periods of time because I was so fascinated because it was like almost like beautiful like almost like a like they were moving to like music even though there's no music playing mm-hmm. uh, but what freaked me out was that I, I I never brought it up for like a long time and when I was like 14 years old like I think we were having a barbecue. And just out of nowhere, like my dad brought it up. And he's like, no, like, when, like, I never told you this, but when you were like a little kid and you were sleeping, there is like these orbs, these green orbs flying over your head. And, uh, and, and uh, I don't know what it was, but like these, there's these green orbs flying over your head. I was like, how come you never told me? It's like, you should have, like <laughs> I used to see them all the time. But I never told my dad because like my mom told me, it's like, it's not a big deal. It's nothing. So I just like thought it was a big deal. But, mm-hmm. So that's how I, I know you like, I know you're just joking around, but like, yeah, yeah, I no, just, I just wanted to include that just to, to, to my credibility because why would I make it up? It's just, I, yeah, for sure. I, I love when people, um, you know, tell stories like that because it, it makes me, um, you know, there's like a certain kind of trust that I have for people that speak like that because I know that so many people have seen things and they just don't want to believe what they saw. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore they think that, you know, oh, it's, uh, I don't want to say anything because I don't want anybody to think I'm crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's silly. That's how our society has, has made us, Um, you know, because we've all seen some weird things in our life. And, you know, I'll, I'll share a a crazy (laughs) story that I had. Um, uh, And, and, you know, for, for, you know, the, uh, 
the SJW people out there, uh, I'm going to use the word Indian, you know, so don't uh, get offended. <laughs> right? um, but, but uh, I, uh, when I was younger, I, um, I stayed at my cousin's house in West Virginia. And that's, that, that's where I was born. Um, and uh, anyway, I went to go see him. And then, uh, you know, it was my first time going to his place. Uh, and, you know, it was his, uh, he was living with his stepdad at the time. And uh, anyway, I, we, we were all, you know, getting ready to go to bed. Um, and I'm in this living room. It's all dark. And then I, uh, I go to sleep. And all of a sudden, I wake up with a, uh, some, some, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, some Indian uh, guy standing over me, uh, with a, um, with a, like a big arrowhead, like a big, like rock arrowhead. And he was standing there hovering over me with this. And I, and I'm like, I'm, I'm literally pinching myself because I'm like, am I dreaming like what what is this and I'm stuck and I'm frozen but then he sees my eyes open and I'm you know I have like eyes of fear opening and it's so dark in here but yet I can see him and he's like green he has like a green like lighting on him and then he runs around the table I don't hear any uh footsteps or anything and then I um um, I, like I, I, I sit up really quick and then I hear a door slam. Right. And I'm like, Oh my God, what, what just happened? And then all of a sudden the light outside goes off. Right. And uh, then that really freaks me out. And, um, anyway, I, I sat up and I, I stayed up and I was pinching myself for, uh, like at least like three hours. I was, I was so spooked. And I knew that it was real because like, you know, I didn't like wake up out of that. I, you know, I literally was like slapping myself. I actually went to the front door like later and, you know, tried to, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, I went and turned the light on and then I, I looked out the windows and I didn't see anybody. And then uh, I go uh, back to sleep for like an hour or so. And then I wake up and I see my, uh, my cousin and his stepdad and I'm like, Hey man, why are you guys messing with me? You know, like last night. And they were like, uh, yeah, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> yes, you do. And they look like, like I can tell when somebody's like, you know, um, trying to hold a secret or whatever. Well, anyway, so they, um, they didn't do anything. Like, I mean, as far as I know, they didn't, but it would, it wouldn't make sense if they did, because like, how the hell can you run around the table with no footsteps? Like you couldn't hear anything. Right. So, um, anyway, then, uh, you know, I kind of just like thought maybe I'm just crazy. Well, then my, uh, my cousin who is the brother of my other cousin came out to see me, he drove out and, um, and, uh, I went outside uh, to see him and, um, you know, he pulled out a, a cigarette and started you know, just asking me how I'm doing and, you know, just greeting each other. And then I'm like, dude, I saw, I swear I saw a ghost last night or something, man. I, I saw somebody and uh, he's like, really? And I thought he was going to say I'm crazy. But then he was like, man, I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> and then he's like, man, one time I came out here and I, he, you know, this, this dude's like clean as hell. He doesn't do anything other than smoke cigarettes. And he, um, he told me that he was sitting in his car one night and he looked up on the roof of that house and there was a freaking, uh, there was a, a, a horse with an Indian riding the horse on top of the house. And he said, it was very ghostly. It's very green. And I was like, wow, man, that's so crazy. And I started explaining my experience. It's like, wow, man, this is like, so this can't be the freaking, they, I mean, they, are they messing with me? But no, this can't be, this is like too much of a, you know, coincidence or something. And um, anyway, then he goes, uh, by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but this house is built on an Indian burial ground. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, so cool. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was my experience 
back then. And, uh, you know, like I I've had other experiences, but you know, I, I think here, here's what I want to say about that. Like what people see is I've, you know, I've done entheogens and what I have come to realize is that when we are in a certain frequency, we can see things that other people can't see. And, um, you know, that's why it's so hard to tell these stories because people are like, yeah, that's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. So therefore there's no way that you experience that you're just, you know, that was us all in your head or you just, somebody played a joke or, you know, whatever. Um, but, but like, and I, and that's not saying that that stuff doesn't happen. I, you know, there are people that play jokes and there are, uh, people do just see things. I completely, uh, believe that, but Um, I do know uh, from experience and from reading lots of other people's experiences and them seeing so many of the same things that there really is a a degree of frequency that, you know, when we're in that degree of frequency, we can see uh, what we couldn't see normally. Does that that have to do with like, I remember when I was a kid, I was in Mexico and I had a really bad cold. And one night, due to the cold, I woke up and I think I saw, like, uh, at the foot of my bed, like, cartoon characters, like, fighting each other, just seeing weird stuff. Like, is that similar? Like, huh. uh, well, like the frequency I mean, thing? or I, I mean, it could be. It's, you know, uh, something else I um, kind of looked into, and I don't remember um, exactly, like, a term for it or anything, but it's like, Sometimes we, uh, you know, when we're in a certain um, level of, you know, awakeness, you know, when we're, you know, we're we're kind of asleep, but kind of awake, we can project things from our own imagination. But that's that's not that's not saying that uh, that's exactly what that is. But you know, um, it can be you know a figment of your imagination as well. Yeah, I think something like that kind of like happened to me. Is, by the way, <laughs> what? Not saying that's what happened to you. I'm uh, just... <laughs> oh, well, 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 something happened to me like like that where I, I was in like a, a sleep. But I think maybe something to like with Nate is, is I don't know what happened to you, uh, uh, Senor Phil. But <laughs> it just sounds kind of funny saying it. But yeah, I don't know what, what happened with you. But like in in uh, I think like what he just said, Nate said, I think applies to what happened to me because. Mm-hmm. Once I like this is like um when was it like I was like uh twenty something at the time and I was very sleep deprived I was working a lot and I remember I was only like on like I was partying I was working all the time and I was drinking a lot and I, I know like I wasn't getting that much sleep so I remember like going into my car like uh, on my lunch break and trying to like eat or like take a nap I don't remember and I remember like being awake just sitting there. And I'm like drinking like a, like a, like drinking like one of those monsters, one of those rock stars or monsters. Yeah. And I, I'm like projecting things. I'm starting seeing things. Like even though I'm awake, I'm like, I know I'm awake. I know I, I'm not asleep. I'm sit, I'm just sitting there and I'm seeing things in front of me. And mm-hmm. it's because a lack of sleep and then having like an energy drink, I'm sort of like projecting these things that aren't there. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I think that the, there's a way of of, of uh that that can happen like when you're sleep deprived mm-hmm. and uh to for you to sort of project those things but like in your instance i i don't know what that was or yeah what it could i think have been. i think that you know the truth is you know our mind is so powerful and it can project things that we're supposed to see you mm-hmm. know it's just like when we dream right um you know something i really find fascinating is how dreams aren't just, you know, random, you know, um, uh, I used to think that dreams were so random and that there was nothing to them. And, you know, not, not saying that every dream means something, but there is, um, you know, for instance, I used to have dreams about my, like right after my grandfather died for whatever reason, I was having dreams of, um, uh, tornadoes and him walking around and being so peaceful. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I started to, you know, I'm like, why after like the 20th time of having that, 
not the same dream, but similar dreams, I started to research what that meant because I was like, man, this is driving me crazy. Like, what could that mean? Well, then I started to realize um, that it meant that I was at a, uh, my heart was broken and I was at a loss. That's, that's one of the things that, uh, or, you know, that's one of the things that I kept uh, finding in all these different um, uh, uh, breakdowns of what that dream could mean. Mm -hmm. And also my life at the time was really chaotic because not only did I lose him, but that's when I, you know, like I told you earlier, when I was a teen, I was, my life was just shit. So uh, my life was spiraling and that's what the tornadoes represent. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's also like, it was because it was peaceful. It was telling me that um, I was, you know, I was trying to make peace with the fact that he had gone. Right. So, cause I, you know, I was very close with him, with him. So I do know that dreams have a symbolic reflection for us. If we, if we, you know, if we really want to know, because I mean, other, otherwise it's just like, it's just, it's random means nothing, move on, never question anything, you know, the end, but, but, you know, obviously like I have so many random dreams where I'm like, you know, what, why did that happen? And I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with this. So uh, I'm just going to move on. I, I can't, I don't have time for this. This is like a really fun episode. Man. <laughs> yeah, it, it, sure. it makes me, because like every time, like you bring up things you make me bring up, like make me think of uh, new things that have happened to me. Yeah. Like uh, the thing with dreams too, is so interesting because when I was like a little kid, like back in 1992, we took a family trip to Mexico. And while we were in Mexico, uh, we left the house with my, my uncle and I think my aunt too, and they're taking care of the house. And when we were in Mexico, I had a dream. And can you guess like what, it, what the dream was about <laughs> in 1992? And I'm uh, from LA. LA. Uh, Rodney King, maybe? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, anyways, anyways, I didn't piece this together because this happened this dream happened like a couple of days before the actual riots happened so i didn't piece them together so what happened was in the dream what i saw was um i was like in the parking lot at a supermarket or like at the time boys market like right there like on slot i don't know if you guys or maybe senior phil is familiar with like uh Slauson and vermont like it was like yeah, that, yeah. that boy that boys market right there that's um so i saw like people jumping off of the roof with like boxes and it was like all like just a bunch of people just jumping and like looting the boys market and they're putting them in, in their cars and like driving away so it was like a scene of riots yeah. that i'm dreaming about so i'm just thinking this is like totally random why the why the hell and, and the funny thing too about that was before i started dreaming about the riots it was so funny i was having this sort of like interrupted my normal dream because in the normal the, the dream prior to to, to that was me like I was like in Star Trek and I was like I don't know what the hell was going on so it's so random it's almost like the 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 that vision like pushed that normal dream like that Star Trek dream out of the way and it's almost like it just segue into the riot scene I was like what the, like why am I watching this and then the other and then like uh in addition to that I walked around I was like what the hell is going on it's like why are these riots and riots going on and then I walked into this enclosure and then I, uh, it's like a, this fence enclosure and I opened the, 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 the gate and inside this enclosure, there's like this one white guy that resembled exactly, uh, was it his name? Reginald Danny, the yeah, truck yeah, driver. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't like, he wasn't next to the truck, uh, to the, his truck, but he was on the ground, like just beat up and all like just mm -hmm. jacked, wow. just jacked up. Okay. And it looked just like him. Like he had the, the trucker hat and he was like on the floor bleeding. I'm like, <laughs> why in the hell am I dreaming about this? And then like, I didn't think about that for like a while. And then I guess it turned out that like my, my, my parents got a call like two days later where they're talking on the phone with my uncle and my uncle was like, Oh yeah, it's going, it's crazy out here. There's like black people fighting with like white people <laughs> they, they yeah. exaggerated like what was going on and then like i'm like why what, what's going on it's like like people are like rioting and and i still didn't piece anything together until i went back home when we went back home i started watching the footage of what happened and i i watched the footage of the truck driver regional danny getting pulled out of the truck uh, out of the, his truck and getting like um beat up and i'm like are you are you fucking kidding me this is 
a lot of these scenes are very familiar to like what I had like of the, of the dream that I had like two days prior to this actually happening. I'm like, how in the hell did I? That was like in Mexico at the time. Yeah. And like I had, and when I was like back then, like when we like we didn't really have access to too much TV. I mean, there was like a little black and white TV, and it was like back when like you'd have to like grab buckets of water. Like we didn't really have we didn't when we back then like when we used to go to Mexico and we we're like little kids. We just yeah. go out and play outside. We didn't we would not watch the TV. TV. We we're like out there like making like little highways with uh, cocholatas, little like the little uh, tops <laughs> from like Coca Cola bottles, and like driving our little Hot Wheels and like yeah, I did the same thing. Shit. Like <laughs> we, we were, no, like we were. So I didn't, had no idea what was going on in LA. So like me having that dream two days before it happened, and then me piecing it together, I'm like, oh shit! Like this, this, this was like my dream. So I think there is something with like, like I don't know, like the dream world has uh, yeah. something to do with reality. <laughs> yeah, I thought of a, a question uh, dealing with dreams. Like, how much is like the actual significance of a dream if it's just super memorable? Like I have a couple of dreams that I just, they're just so weird that I still remember them. And I don't know if they mean anything. Uh, Like for one is, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I'm like in a parking lot and I'm looking for like my car. I think my family's car was young at the time. And all of a sudden uh, there's like a crew of like people in robes chanting and they sort of like gestured to me to come with them and like, okay, I go with them. And all of a sudden, like I follow them and on the outside of this parking lot, there's like a, like a, a kind of like a mass grave with like super creepy religious like statues on the call, like weathered and rusty. And all of a sudden, like they, so I'm walking around this grave and they all of a sudden they slowly start to move really, really and then I walk right in front of like a, a Jesus statue, I think. And all of a sudden, as I'm watching it, like the Jesus statue is like his head is like it's broken off. Then all of a sudden, like his like the head starts to like reform again or something like that. And wow. for some reason, I still remember that day. It's like the most one of the most vivid dreams I remember. I don't know why or what it's supposed to mean, but like, have you searched anything of the like suggesting that like how vivid you remember a dream? Like, is it supposed to mean anything or is it just, it's just, I don't know. I think, you know, kind of like what I was saying uh, about that dream that I had about my grandfather and the tornado Mm -hmm. tornadoes is you know, if it really sticks with you, if you wake mm-hmm. up and it's really like, like, it's almost like it's, uh, uh, it's like, um, you know, poking you on the shoulder, like, Hey, come on, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to this one. You gotta pay attention. Yeah. It's almost like you probably should pay mm-hmm. attention to that, you know, cause the universe is always speaking. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, if, if we, you know, and I, like I said, again, if we, uh, um, we can always just move on from our dreams, but if you have time and you really, it's really like hitting you, um, you know, maybe it's time that you, um, you know, look into it, not, not, not because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a, a, you know, you know, the tarot readers, right. Uh, tar- you know, telling your, your future, yeah, yeah. well, you know, there, there might be some truth to that, you know, um, but it's, it's kind of like a, you know, um, you know, it's, it's like what you're supposed to see. It's what you're supposed to think. Um, everything mm-hmm. happens for a reason kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, so you kind of, you know, you go with what your gut tells you to do mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe it leads you some, why not? Why not? Why, like you live this one life. Why not explore things that people probably would laugh at, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. maybe they're missing out on one of the most fun extraordinary things mm-hmm. you know and uh why it's you it's your yeah. it's your life yeah so it, that's just been a dream that just like every time people bring up dreams that's the one dream i like super remember most dreams like kind of a little easy on that one for some reason I, like i think i was in probably like early middle school and i had that dream I, I still like remember it like vividly yeah, I mean, yeah. you should if you remember it that much. You should definitely look into it. Yeah. Um, I actually just had a dream about uh, somebody who really did me wrong. 
like just mm-hmm. really, you know, um, did some messed up shit to me. And I, um, we, we became best friends again in the dream. And I woke up like, nah, man, like I actually was like, I, you know, I woke up for a few seconds thinking, wow, we're friends again. And I'm like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. He <laughs> really, really did me wrong. I definitely don't want anything to do with him. I don't know why I had the dream, but I still haven't looked into it. It was, I actually just had that dream last night. So, mm-hmm. um, but I, I guess I kind of think, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you got to, I don't know, I don't know what, what other people would say, but I would say it just means I got to, you know, forgive and move on mm-hmm. and make peace with them kind right. of thing. Yeah. Um, I guess, I, I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, you, you mentioned that you were kind of interested in talking about like the SJW type of people. Um, was there anything specifically that you kind of wanted to get off your chest or something like that? Or? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, you know, I, uh, the thing is, is we have to remember something really important. And that is, um, you know, like if you, if you look at the, um, like the basics of the brain structure, okay, look at, um, you know, there's a, a neuroscientist, um, Dr. Dr. McLean, McLean, mm-hmm. and he postulated that the brain is made of three smaller brains and these so so basically you have a triune brain you have a three in one brain so you have the what's what's called the um you have the neocortex which is the the two hemispheres that that are on top and then in the middle you have what's called the limbic brain and then on the bottom you have the r complex or what's known as the reptilian brain and when when we are in a, um, you know, when our consciousness or our energy or uh, our, um, our thoughts are in a, a, a fear, right? When we're in a state of fear, we're operating out of the R complex, you know, the lower part of the brain. Mm-hmm. And this is known as the mechanical brain. It's the, it's the oldest part of the brain mm-hmm. because, it's, because it's the survival brain. And this survival brain um, is what's what makes us, uh, you know, um, this is this is the this is part of the ego that's, you know, good or, or bad, you know, because, it, you know, like if a tree branch has fallen towards your head, you're going to get out of the way because, you know, you matter. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, uh, so that's the good part of the brain. But the point is, is that um, this brain, um, it. It, uh, it, this is where all the blood is uh, uh, pumping to when we are in a state of, uh, of fight or flight in a survival mode. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then there's the amygdala, which is within the limbic system and the limbic system. So think of, think of the R complex as like, you know, the, it's, a, it's a masculine um, this is a masculine energy. And then the limbic part of the brain in the middle, this is where the amygdala is. This is the feminine part of the brain. This is where our emotions reside. Mm-hmm. So when, when we are uh, in, in a, an emotional um, state of mind, well, we're not operating in the, uh, the upper part where the critical thinking is taking place. Mm-hmm. So crit- the, our critical thinking, our, our logic and our reasoning operates in the, uh, the neocortex, which is neo means new. So this is the newer part of our brain. This is the most developed part, which makes us human. And the reason I'm saying all this is because the, the whole, you know, the uh, social justice warriors have, you know, been around for thousands of years. It's nothing new. Um, but the point is, is that it's um, they the the mind has to be understood to see why they are operating where the dominators want them from the brain, which is fear 
and uh, an emotion. So not operating in the neocortex. So they they uh, their dominant their their thoughts are uh, um, being dominated and their emotions are being dominated. And um, so so when you're trapped in a a, a uh, um, like a circular uh, pattern. Um, between the uh, the R complex and the mammalian or limbic brain, what what's happening is you're 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 um, you're not critically thinking. You're uh, you're you're in fear, and you know when you're in fear, critical thinking really you know uh, isn't there. Yeah. You're not thinking logically. Well, SJWs, the social justice warriors, are operating out of um, fear and e emotion without, you know, like, uh, they're not operating out of uh, a critical thinking. They don't have the knowledge. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't realize why they're getting upset. They're just getting upset. They're reacting. They're reactive people. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, not because not, not only because, um, they're, uh, you know, um, because they haven't done work, but because they're under mind control. And uh, they make their opinion worth knowledge. And that's the biggest problem is like they, uh, this type of mindset, um, when brought to a table of logic, they don't know how to be other than uh, say that my opinion is all that matters or my opinion matters. And that's it, you know, like, mm -hmm. and you have to deal with that. It's like, no, um, if there is, if we're going to uh, have a, a conversation, it's going to be logical because if we don't use logic, if we don't, if we're not honest, then we're not getting anywhere. We're in a, uh, you know, um, we're in a uh, back and forth chaos. And that's, that's where we're wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why, like when these people, uh, you know, start, um, you know, flapping off at the mouth, uh, they don't have any critical uh, thinking skills because they have not done any work. They don't know um, uh, why they're being this way. They're just, you know, they're allowing their emotions to speak irrational. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, this is how, this is what the dominators want. They want us, um, they want us divided uh, within to, uh, you know, um, constantly, uh, think that we we know what's best. That's why, you know, like yeah. okay, think of the think of the word democracy. Okay, democracy. Just the word. Don't don't think about the ideology. Just think about the word. For instance, what what does the word mean? It means mob rule. Okay, and the only way mob can rule is by ignorance. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means that you're at, you're uh, you're you're reacting irrational from your mo emotional reptilian brain and you are uh, speaking with just opinion. You're not speaking with, with knowledge. And so it's, it, you know, the, that whole, that whole movement is like, okay, here's the other thing I want to say is like, Hey, you have your right to your opinion, but you, you cannot make your opinion uh, um, worth honesty or logic or anything like that if you don't have the knowledge and um you know uh, it's 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 this it, as long as we believe in this uh this mob rule mentality um you everybody can be right and uh you know and we have no morals we have no values we have no uh, you know, set principles. We're just all over the place saying whatever we want, getting, you know, joining any movement that we want. And these movements are all uh, psyops anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, when you really look into these movements, like, yeah, they, they might start out as true grassroots movements, right? Yeah. Um, but then they are, they are, uh, you know, um, you can tell right away that they, uh, that they become a psyop. Because they are, you know, um, they help, uh, you know, get the agenda for these dominators that they want, you know, and it, it's a very, um, it's, it's very sophisticated yet, if we understand how the mind works, if we understand the brain, and we understand the, the aspects of the brain, we can understand why people are in this trap and this prison. And, um,
you know, it's, I mean, I guess I kind of was like a, you know, I think, I think we all have been a little bit of a social justice warrior at one mm -hmm. point or another. Yeah. And it's, and we, we can all look back and agree like, oh yeah, I was definitely ignorant. I did not know. Yeah. I, I had no idea that, that this is why I was the way I was. But the thing is, is um, it really all comes to honesty and that's what people don't want to be. They don't want to be honest. Yeah, I think you bring up a pretty good point with the honesty thing because I've, you know, there's a couple of uh, you know, family members that are you know, SJW types, and I've, I've genuinely just tried to have a conversation. Uh, like I, I pretty much them like, look, just just pick a topic, whatever the hell you want, and <laughs> we could get to some mutual understanding, just so you can kind of know that, you know, it's not as extreme as you think, and it's it felt like more like i was like talking to like a salesman for their movement rather than someone that like genuinely kind of put forth like any like actual effort into like researching the thing like for example like the george floyd thing like how many of the like super loud shaws like have actually like you know watched the actual body cam footage that's available like right. have, you know read the uh what do you call the uh uh, what's it called the death report the uh autopsy report right and you know like how many of them actually done that opposed to just like follow along this trendy movement of like i don't know what you call it do gooderness <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, yeah and, and once you kind of get them to just realize that like they don't know enough to like have an opinion they get super emotional and then they just want to like change the subject you know like like what drives someone to just be that way <laughs> like how could you let your emotions just take over you in such an extreme way like if i don't know that much about something i just flat out i'm, I'm pretty neutral on it like israel and palestine i don't know much about it i'm willing to talk to anybody about it but i'm not going to have like a super emotional fight over it mm -hmm. yeah right and uh, you know like, like how how did it become like a, like a trendy movement to be that way? Is what I'm like I guess trying to figure out. Like, it, well, it would make it would make sense to to like meet someone that way and just be like, well, I'm never going to be that way. And if that becomes trendy, that's just going to be stupid. But it feels like it's becoming trendy, and I don't think that's a very positive movement for the for the future of this country. No, it's not. Um, I, you know, I think the, the, like I, like I said earlier, it's as long as, as long as the, um, the dominators of this world, of uh, the elitist, the hierarchy, um, as long as they have that control over our thoughts and emotions, mm -hmm. then they have us right where we, where they want us. And, you know, the, what, what makes people act this way is, um, you know, it just, it just keeps going back to fear and ignorance. Mm -hmm. And this trend is all like, you know, how I'm seeing it is that they, uh, they want to be on a side of emotion. Um, they, cause they relate, you know, so if, if one side is relating on something and then the other side is like yeah i see a bunch of horse shit i'm not gonna you know join that collective group think um uh, because not because i don't believe in what they're doing but because of the way they're acting and handling mm -hmm. what they're doing because like you know a lot of these movements i'm like yeah, I totally uh, agree with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for a lot of these things, but what, how you handle it, and the way that you become very see, it's funny because like a lot of people who are all about like hate speech, they end up being the most violent, hateful people, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ironic. Can attest to that. Yeah, yeah. When I was in, I was in college, and like you know, I would just overhear people like at SJWs, and they would really say some of the most like horrible shit it, like if they felt like no one was listening to them like some of those racist shit against mm -hmm. white people and stuff like that and right. against men 
like I, I took a um, I think like an expressionism literature class or something like that. I forget I forget the subject, but um, ah. it's like a it's like a one hundred and one beginners class, and the the teachers like reading off the names of the authors that they're going to be going over for the semester. And some kids just like, oh, well, there's a bunch of white guys. And they all had like this small universal like chuckle, like, ha, 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 ha. And I was just in my head like, why does that matter? Like, if yeah. I said, if I was taking like African-American literature and I was like, oh, it's just a bunch of darkies. Like, you know, I think people yeah, would absolutely. assume that I'm being an ass. But, right. uh, I'm a darkie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean... I guess if you had like any advice for someone who was in college or whatever, or maybe, or, or new people or had a group of friends that were like drifting towards that mindset, like how would they, I guess, approach like maybe changing their mind or is it even worth it? Uh, um, are you, are you speaking about the people who are emotional responders? Or are you talking about the people who are, you know, more like you on your, I guess the people that are more like me, but they're like, uh -huh. their family members are more SJW like, or, you know what I mean? I mean, they, it's really hard, man. I mean, I, I deal with it on a daily mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, what I've learned is always keep your peace, be stern, be honest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the moment that they start to, you know, get out of control, uh, I just, I mean, for me, I, I don't waste my time anymore. I like to spend time with people who want to learn because the more people who do learn, um, these, these important topics and how to understand the psychology and how to understand, you know, the, the methods, uh, being waged against us, you know, that that's, those are the people that are going to make the bigger positive changes in the world. And, you know, obviously never give up on people like that. I would always say that never give up on them because I mean, I have those people in my life, but what you want to do with them. Um, unfortunately they are, they want to be spoon fed. You, they want really like, you know, peaceful, uh, you know, <laughs> voice like this and mm -hmm. you know talk like uh you know Eckhart Tolle you know this very <laughs> like or or you know they 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 want a comedian to tell them the truth mm -hmm. and it's very it's a very interesting thing um so uh, you you what you what you have to do is you have to be patient um that's what i definitely recommend be patient um keep doing research, keep trying to understand how the mind works, because then the more you know how to, the mind works, the more you know how to deal with their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Their consciousness. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's really just, um, you know, just always being honest and always uh, knowing, uh, you know, uh, you know, choose your battles wisely, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I've just really tried to move to closer to people who actually want to listen, you know, that making my podcast is, uh, you know, has been a big help for me because then I can really get a lot of this stuff off my chest. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, thankfully, thanks to you guys for, you know, giving me an outlet to do the same because I mean, these, these conversations, like, you know, anything that I say on here, I, I don't say to offend anybody, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would never waste my time trying to do something like that. That's mm -hmm. nonsense. That's silly. But yeah. what I am trying to do is I'm trying to uh, come on and bring education that I feel is important. And I, I want to see peace in the world. I want to see people getting along. I don't, you know, like, we used to, there used to be a time, uh, maybe, maybe not in the, the, the last, like, you know, 200 years or 400 years, but I believe that there used to be a time when we were more of a balanced being that, uh, was able to, you know, get along with people because, uh, you know, there was, you know, there wasn't, um, for one, there maybe people, uh, were more pure and they cared about, these types of ideas and topics mm -hmm. uh, and maybe the information was available too, because you have to understand there's these, you know, what's called the dark occult. 
and the dark occult are basically, you know, evil rulers who hide information. That's what occult means. It just means uh, to hide. So they are, they have occulted this really important information from the people of the world, which, you know, makes them nescient to a degree um, because the information wasn't available, but um, you know, I do believe that there was a time when we all, uh, you, you know, were, were more advanced. Uh, and I, you know, I believe that there was a time when rulers weren't uh, allowed to be as dominant as they are now, too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's all in degrees. And I think, you know, right now we're at the threshold where we're at our lowest as a human species in consciousness. But, you know, that's just me looking through history and uh, you know, um, you know, um, uh, just measuring it from, from my standpoint, from my perspective. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I think we're, I think there is, you know, we're going to have to suffer a lot more before we start to really wake up together. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, here we are talking on this podcast and, you know, we are reaching people. And so I, I, uh, I do think that there is hope because of this. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you got me. Everything you you guys are saying, like, is is getting me to think uh, a lot. And uh, the other thing that I, I was thinking about, why is it that like uh, certain areas are most mostly populated, like Los Angeles, New York, all these like cities? It seems to me that they're designed and they're they're governed in a way to just frustrate people in a way to like lower their fre- frequency. And an example, even like in the constru- construction, like in LA, okay. I drive all over like LA County. And the one thing that I've noticed like in LA is that some of the more poorer um, communities, it seems that have like the, the worst sort of uh, streets, they have a certain, just like these one ways or like these twisted mm-hmm. roads where like, you know, that's just like an accident waiting to happen or these, this, it's just the way that it's constructed. It's almost like it's, it's, it's a way to like frustrate people mm-hmm. and like lower the, their frequency. And it seems that they're trying to get like a, a lot of these people populated in one area and frustrated. And I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to start like, this is like conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, conspiracy, I'm just, because I'm Go practicing ahead, my freedom of speculating. That's okay. You t- <laughs> 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 because I think there something has to do with like, with cell phones, like the frequency of cell phone. Like if you look at cells, I think they're having an impact on people. And when you can gather a bunch of people in one area, say like Los Angeles, Chicago, or New York, you can start influencing their frequency a certain way. And I think that's why a lot of these, uh, these cities are doing so poorly because their frequency is being, or being lowered by the way that they're designed, like the streets and the way, and just having so many people in one area. I think it's almost like a, like a, like a net having all these people in one area it's like somebody's bad energy rubs off on somebody else. And I think it's all being done using cell phones. And that's like something that I thought about like a long time, like a long time ago that I, it just, it just makes sense. Why is it that like these less, like more rural areas, they don't really care. They just want to work for themselves. They just want to mm-hmm. be kept alone. And it seems like they're more benign than some of these areas. Like I remember when we spoke with uh, Derek, right. He kind of like yeah. sort of like a, uh, in a more rural area and also even look at look at uh another connection with um uh reagan lodge he lives in like a more sort of rural area of, of uh, san diego mm-hmm. county yeah i don't and it seems that like when you get away from like the like the, these mobs like you can call it like mobs of people i think they're maybe influenced by their cell phone or by the design of their environment uh <clears throat> I think, I, I think that I think that's what it is because I'm just trying to make sense because just like you, the, you you're I'm I'm also just as frustrated trying to figure out why is it that you can't just take five minutes to look into this story or or try to like stop reacting and using your <laughs> I, I think I, I think I think it has to do with like a like if you get a bunch of people in some kind of area, there's gonna be this weird hustle and bustle competitiveness that's just gonna come yeah. out of nowhere and I think this rush to like try to be right or try to be righteous kind of mm. kicks in with the shit. Um, yeah. I, I think it might have some to do with what you're kind of after <laughs> we're going. Yeah. It's like, it's like, as soon as like one person says, it's almost like a, like a domino effect. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they see something, it's like uh, everybody doesn't 
nobody likes to stand on their own two feet mm-hmm. and and say their opinion but as soon as like one person is like oh yeah you shouldn't be doing that like or you should like stand up for trans rights then like another person oh yeah, yeah. maybe i should say something too because i'm gonna be brave just like this other douchebag and then like another person it trickles down and, like and then that person that was really afraid to say something by the 90th person like like they they have no more courage like they don't have to be brave anymore they can just say oh i'll throw in my two cents and it's just that sort of like being able to hide behind everybody else takes no courage that it's just so easy to exercise their their what, what can you call it their sjw tendencies I don't yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> <sighs> It's, uh, you know, it's people are trapped. This is interesting. It's just, you know, this is making me think about something, but yeah, people are, uh, they're trapped in their nine to five, which means that they're in survival mode Mm -hmm. constantly, just, you know, uh, nine to five, uh, you know, uh, you know, work, sleep, eat, repeat, work, sleep, eat, repeat. Right. And so they're in this trap. And, uh, you know, then you, you, you know, like they're also in, you know, so you can look at a trap as like a prison, right? Well, it's the same as a phone. It's not just called a cell phone for nothing. It's a cell. You're trapped in a cell, right? So it's like, you know, we, we, we have to realize that these cities, the way I look at it is they're human farms. Okay. So they're, they're using our energy to 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 uh to sw- like in in such a like complex way um you know like like it's in like the movie matrix where uh, morpheus is taught have you guys seen that yeah of the course movie? yeah um the where he 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 starts saying like you're a battery right mm, you're yeah. like a battery well that's what we are we're a battery to keep this machine alive right and, you know, you look at L.A. and it's like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool parts of L.A. Sure. You know, there's 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 a lot of neat stuff there to, to look at. And, you know, I'm sure, it, you know, a lot of people like living there. Not not, not so much these days. <laughs> Maybe not so much these days, but I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I, I would never just say like, oh, you know, yeah. L.A. is just the worst place ever. I mean, you know, I definitely have been to some really awful places all around the world. And, and so some of those places are in LA, but um, <laughs> especially driving, Jesus Christ. Um, but uh, when we really, you know, see it, like, you know, you think about all these uh, 5G cell towers, you know, that's draining our, our life away too, because, you know, think about this, the, the like, I'm not saying that uh, there's anything wrong with um, high speed of downloading information. I think that's really cool, actually. But the problem with that is um, it comes with not only the physical radiation, but you're also on your phone more because you're just like, oh my God, this is lightning speed. I can get to everything. I could do everything and I could just stay on and just scroll, 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 and, uh, you know, never get off of it. And, you know, the more that we keep our attention there, the more they can, you know, these, these, uh, this, you know, this, uh, shadow government, if you want to call it that the cabal, the dominators, they, they know, um, where our attention is and they know, how to manipulate what entertainment comes to us. So we're constantly in in entertainment. Um, I mean, we're flooded with entertainment. Um, And and it's just, it's it's so hard for people to like find anything real uh, because, uh, you know, this entertainment is just clouding us and and this 5G is bringing bringing it to us so fast. And we're working so hard for nothing. Our, you know, we're, we're our, you know, our taxes are 
so much and we're constantly being taxed in our we're working for like close to nothing these days you know it's so expensive to live so we're you know these cities you know we we're we're uh, they're very attractive because why they have a lot of people you know and they also know that sex sells <laughs> so it's like you know these are uh, sex nests you know where they can just bring everybody and you know uh, uh, make them have sex, but then they're not reproducing too. You know you got to think about that. Yeah, Why yeah. aren't they reproducing as much as they used to? Well, it's because we're sterile, and you know women are they're putting all these women, uh, young girls are on birth control. You know, and it's ruining their their uh, the whole system. That's why so many people just don't have as many kids as they used to. So it's just it's a, it's a really um, I mean, there's just so much going on in these cities, and uh, but you know how they're using them, how they're soaking up all this energy from people. Man, you really uh, benevolent asshole. You really. Uh, you really um, are, are hitting the, the nail on the head because I mean, that's, it's the truth. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm getting out of San Diego. Uh, I mean, you know, among many other reasons, but uh, you know, I, I want to go somewhere that is uh, less people because th this, this, you know, n n with, with big cities comes also uh, that democracy that I'm talking about, this mob rule, this, um, this uh, this way that everybody just kind of like jumps on the same bandwagon and then they enforce their views on you through coercive force of, you know, uh, how how they vote and, and you know, get you to uh, live the way they want you to live. That's why I'm I definitely am not uh, part of that system because I, I think it's very immoral. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, have argued and said that it's not immoral, but it is because, I mean, when you vote, what you're doing is you're essentially, you know, um, saying like, well, hey, I don't want any marijuana in my in my hometown. So what am I going to do? I'm going to I'm going to go uh, vote and hopefully we get over 50 uh, percent votes. And uh, that way we can enforce our will on you through these order followers who enforce these these laws and then you can be you know jailed for having a plant you know it's it's it's, it's madness yeah. and, and um you know so i'm not i don't want to be part of that and uh you know i'm definitely it's definitely not very popular uh you know people really really um, um look down upon that but hey you know i i see i see it as you know it's not re it's not um you know, it's not a moral thing and it's not real in nature. It's just a, it's a way for people to, you know, um, just to have, have their way and be ignorant about it. And I, I, I completely disapprove of that, but you know, this comes with these big cities. So it's, uh, it's a really, I think it's really important that we address that and really look into it because, you know, it's a, it's a dangerous ideology. Yeah. Uh, I, guess. <laughs> I know I, uh, I, that's good a lot i guess uh we should start maybe ending it uh um i guess if, if there's any uh final thoughts anybody want to bring up or anything like that um, it sounds like you guys kind of nailed it <laughs> well i just want to say i am so thankful to be on your show it's man you guys are just so cool and um, you have great questions and it was fun and it was also uh really cool that you allowed me to uh share what i know and understand and i uh, i really definitely look forward to being back on yeah i mean awesome. if, you know we'd love to be on your show sometime too you know, yeah man for sure. <laughs> for sure um all right um I guess benevolent. Do you want to add anything? Uh, no, I, I'm just glad. I'm so glad uh, Nate was able to um, actually join us for this uh, episode. It's somebody that I've been looking at and I've been uh, checking out a little bit. Like, well, I've only checked out the the one podcast, but I I, I know that you've uh, you've been sort of like on this journey of like trying to uh, find truth. So mm -hmm. I, I've noticed that, and I'm not. I haven't seen that really too much from like other people. And uh, 
especially coming from the art community. So especially caricature community, because that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> so I, I, I would like to, I, I would wish that there was like more people that are open-minded and just mm-hmm. would be open to yeah. sharing their, their, their ideas or their, mm-hmm. their, their point of views, because it, it, it just, it's, it's just necessary to listen to each other, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can I can I add something to that? Yeah, go for it. Um, I uh, that is something that I would love to have a conversation about is the art community being so you know like when you think of art uh, being an artist you think of like an open mind that's yeah, what I was always brought up to think is like oh if you're an artist you're an open minded person but man that is not true at all at all like all yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that that's that's the main reason i wanted to start this show because i was noticing a trend of that amongst artists and i was like oh, well, yeah especially over weird. like the last last few years like i yeah. noticed i'm like okay hold, hold on like uh, that's cool but like hold on like <laughs> it just seems like everybody was just kind of like it's sort of like her mentality i'm like mm-hmm. yeah so. yeah i mean you know, but uh, yeah, if you guys ever want me to come back on and talk yeah. about that, I would love to. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll set it up anytime. Hopefully more people will be on. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, I'll go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to plug anything real quick before we oh. end it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My podcast is um, is Cubbyhole, and it is um, on the website – at uh, cubbyhole.com. That's C U B B Y W H O L E.com. And you can also find the podcast on Simplecast, on Spotify, on Apple, on TuneIn Radio, and Radio.com. I think there's a few more. But uh, yeah, man, if you come, if you come over to the website, you can find all the presentations um, that I've done and, um, and, and then some, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, right. you, you'll have, you'll have a field day there. <laughs> all right. I'll link up all to all your stuff on the video. Um, Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I guess that ends another episode. Uh, if any other artists listening would be curious to be on the show, you can just always contact me. I'll uh, have my email up and uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, this is another episode of the critical Insurance show. Thank you.